to the High Low Food Show. I am Josh Modell. I'm here with my friend Eric Anderson. We are in Charleston, South Carolina. Hot Charleston, South hot, Carolina. very hot. Tonight we're heading to a place called McCrady's. By uh, Chef Sean Brock. Uh, it's kind of a high-end uh, southern food experience. Eric, what kind of things do you think we could, we're going to eat at McCrady's that you wouldn't find in uh, most, probably um, almost any other restaurant? I mean, specifically, I'm not sure, but I know that, uh, you know, Sean and his staff are really into uh, preserving southern food and southern culture and you know just uh kind of giving us a taste of how things were years ago you know a lot of like uh lost plants and lost seeds or lost you know beans things along those lines that you know not a lot of people have seen for a long time so i sync my phone up with the car and uh, you want to hear the new maritime record does it come out for a while that's a blast from the past of right, course here you go This place uh, has an incredible amount of history. It was built um, around 1778 and uh, was owned by a guy named Edward McCready. And it's honestly been an incredible form of inspiration. I mean, you come to work every day in a place that George Washington ate at, you can't help Unreal. but think about what people were eating and what people were talking about then. We were living and, and had a restaurant in a, an incredible city with an incredible story to tell and it hadn't been told properly because the plants didn't exist, and so therefore the cuisine didn't exist. I mean, you, you start climbing around upstairs mm -hmm. here and you're gonna find hundreds and hundreds of varieties of corn and hundreds of varieties of beans and peas, and that may seem crazy and hoarder-like, but to me, those seeds represent a specific place or a specific time period um, that remind us of uh, our past and what that used to taste like and what it should taste like. It's almost like the Indiana Jones of the farm. It really you know? is, you know, um, in order to truly replicate or restore a cuisine, you can't do it without the plants. The older generations would come in and they would have these crazy, almost spiritual experiences. Whoa. It really struck this is, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it was, it just, it, that's the power of food. One of the phrases that I always remember you talking about is eating out of the garden, like when you were a kid, you know? A lot of my chores uh, as a kid were in the garden and, uh, I didn't really love that. Um, but then, <laughs> yeah. you know, I wanted to play Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. But then once I started eating this stuff mm -hmm. in the garden, I started realizing how amazing, amazing it was. And then you couldn't get me out of the garden. Mm -hmm. I was digging up and eating all the potatoes. I was eating all the rhubarb. Once you experience that and you get used to that, that's real food, that flavor, that experience. Mm -hmm. That's a moment I'm always chasing as a, as a cook is, you know, how can I like, like that emotion, like how can I get that mm -hmm. on this table? You know, that's, that's awesome. That's the fun part. Here we are at McCready's in Charleston. Yeah, on a beautiful, beautiful old restaurant. Pretty incredible building. Yeah, the two hearths they used to cook out mm -hmm. of back then, which they still use, to, I think, to an extent today as well. What but do you expect to kind of eat here? Maybe some newer old stuff, you know, that people haven't seen done in a modern way, you know? We're gonna have a tasting menu tonight, which all of our high-end restaurants mm -hmm. are. High-end restaurants now, mm -hmm. that's just the way it's done. How long has that it's been? It's always been done. Like, you know, has like it always been done that way? Not always, but it's, we're hundreds and hundreds of years behind food. You know what I mean? No, like, I have no idea, but I wanna know. Like France, you know, like food is, and Spain, like food is in such a high regard there. We're so new to this game because we're just such a young country, which is why it's exciting when like you take American hams and Americans, when people can actually produce products like that that are on the same level as European products, you know, because we're so young, we're so, it's literally, it's a new country. Like, here we go. Start you off with a few snacks, put them right here in between. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm You caviar fan? You know, I always like it, but I never, like, I can't tell one from the next. I'm no, I'm not an expert, you know. Potato I would caviar put the caviar, fan. and I'm not gonna tell you how to eat, but I would put the caviar on my tongue first. Yeah. Mm. Caviar, you usually think of Russia, or, you know, there's amazing, like, uh, Iranian and Chinese, which, you know, it's not very sustainable, but you don't think of caviar coming from the South.
I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, I think I'm going to like this dish. Yeah, I think you will too. You went in for the for the beans first. One thing I've learned is there are some stuff that cooks you can just make a bean and something would never believe mm. Your brisket fan, I assume, in general. Yeah. I think the beans are the highlight to me though. Yeah. You taste just taste get like one just one mouthful just be the beans. It's oh incredible. I did. The protein doesn't have to be the star of the dish. Mm -hmm. How was it? Really good. Delicious. I'm out. Half and half? I think I did pretty well. Um, so that was a great meal. That was not... It wasn't biscuits and gravy and... No. You know, but it was all southern ingredients. Really, really delicious. A lot of sort of flavors I'd never tasted before. I'm glad to have you here to explain a few things to me here and there. I try. Makes me want to come back to Charleston. You should. ASAP. We'll be back tomorrow. That's right, we will be back tomorrow.